Laura Schlinglov Nemetz, and she is from Central European University. Hello. Um, I will present a project on the question what preschoolers mean by helping. And uh, this is joint work with Barbara Pomiechowska, Deni Tatone, and Gege Chibra. So we study how preschoolers understand third party helping interactions. Why is this interesting? Developmental research has assumed that helping constitutes a paradigmatic pro social behavior. And as such, it is frequently used in experimental stimuli to probe infants' and children's um, socio-moral thought. This research has, over the last years, found that even young infants can engage in sophisticated um, reasoning and social evaluation upon observing agents help one another. Although this area of research relies heavily on helping, not much is known about exactly how infants and children understand this action, that is, uh, what kind of helping concept they recruit to make sense of the scenarios in front of them. So what does it mean to help? For example, a situation like this one um, could be interpreted in terms of the cat performing an action that makes it possible for the dog to reach her goal. Helping here would be an action that enables another agent's goal completion. In many of the infant study stimuli, or even most of them actually, um, the helper acts as an enabler so it is conceivable that such a concept captures how young children make sense of what is going on. Here's an alternative. Um, the concept of helping could be grounded in a more general framework of action understanding, the naive utility calculus. According to this theory, people see others as utility maximizers who act in a way that they can maximize the rewards from goals while minimizing their action costs, for example, by acting efficiently. By leveraging these assumptions, observers can infer the likely goals of others by um, attending to their behavior, the options they have available, and the constraints they face. In this framework, helping is an action whose goal it is to increase the utility that another goal-directed agent obtains from an action. This can be done, for example, by reducing the effort that the helpee has to incur to reach her goal. To give you an example, recently I came back from a uh, walk with the baby stroller and it just started to rain as I reached the back entrance of my building and this can only be um, accessed from the inside so I called my partner and she came downstairs and let us in I could have also gotten home by walking all the way around the block to the front entrance but because of my partner's help I was spared this extra effort and the baby and I managed to stay dry so our working hypothesis is that something like this is at the core of what we mean when we talk about helping it captures both situations where a helper makes an outcome possible for the helpee, as well as those where the helper simply makes goal completion easier. We wanted to test whether children use such a utility-based concept when they are asked about helping scenarios. So we designed a study with three-year-old preschoolers who in previous tasks were found to use quite sophisticated naive utility calculus reasoning and who understand and use the word help. We approached our question in two different ways. Firstly, we presented kids with a situation where they themselves could help another agent to find out whether they would do so in a way that the helpie's action cost was minimized. And secondly, we showed kids a third party context where two agents performed superficially similar looking actions, but only one of them actually minimized the helpie's action costs in this way. We then here asked children to identify which one helped. This experiment was conducted on Zoom, and um, participants received four test trials, two for each of the questions, which I will now um, show you in turn. So at the beginning of the experiment, kids are introduced to a character, the Kobo, who collects apples. Um, they saw this familiarization clip, where the Kobo picks up an apple and takes it to his house. I apologize for the weird sound effects, but the kids liked it. <laughs> mm. Then when he tries again, his most direct path to the apple is blocked. He first tries unsuccessfully to move the obstacle aside and then uh, detours along a longer path um, on the lower side of the wall 
again to get to the apple and then takes it home. Then kids participated in two trials that were meant to address the first question. Um, when they are asked to help the Kobo, would they do so in a way that the Kobo's action cost is minimized? In one of the trials, which I call the two goals trial, this happens. Mm. Mm. The experimenter then told kids that they could help the Kobo by moving aside one of the rocks and asked which one should be moved. As you can see, or not anymore, but I hope you saw, uh, there are two possible goals that the agent could approach and uh, one of them can be reached at a lower cost or lower effort than the other. Subsequently, the event that the child indicated played out. So the purple or the black rock moves aside and the Kobo approaches the apple behind it. Note that both of these actions are helpful in the sense of letting the Kobo reach her goal of an apple, but one of them allows the Kobo to reach the target at lower costs, thus maximizing utility. Okay, in the other trial, the one goal trial, you'll guess it, kids saw this happen. Mm. And again, the experimenter asked which rock should be moved. Now there's, there's only a single apple, but it can be approached via one of two paths of differing length. And again, the event that the child indicated played out. I'm not gonna make you sit through that. Okay. The second question was whether kids think that an agent helped who reduced an, a helpie's action cost. We addressed this in a second block with two additional test trials. In the first test trial, kids saw this video. So here, two new agents appear and each moves a rock aside. The experimenter then asked which one helped. As you can see, one agent removed a stone that was actually in the way of the green agent's um, path to the apple, while the other performed an action that looked similar, but that actually um, was irrelevant to the green character. Note that the Kobo can, in principle, reach the goal by herself by detouring around the lower end of the wall again, here helping merely consists in lowering the action costs. So unlike in the previous test trials, I should note, um, here kids didn't intervene on the action themselves, but were just asked to interpret a third party interaction. And the event did not play out until the end. So kids didn't see the green agent actually go to the apple and they never um, saw the consequences of the novel agent's behaviors. Okay, and then the second test trial of the second block, kids saw this video. And um, subsequently, the experimenter asked which one helped. Here again, both agents perform a, perform a somewhat similar looking action. One, as before, helps the green agent by reducing its action costs, whereas the other one hinders it by increasing its action costs. Also again, the, the helpie could in principle reach either of the goal items herself. Okay, so give you, to give you an overview of the experimental structure, after participating in a warm-up phase, children saw an introduction video and then the two how to help trials in block one, then a repetition of the introduction video and the two how to help trials and a who help trials in block two. The order of the blocks was fixed as was the order of trials in block one, uh, in block two, and in block one we counterbalanced the order. In these tasks, to respond correctly, you need to compare different options that yield different utility. Specifically, you have to compare the costs that the helpie would incur as a consequence of the helping intervention with the respective alternative. We predicted that if kids have a utility-based concept of helping, they should, in the first block, help in such a way that the helpie can reach her goal with the lowest amount of cost. Um, here, choosing to remove the barrier that is closest uh, that to the closest apple or the barrier that obstructs the shortest path to the apple, marked here in red. And in the second block, children should identify which agent helped, meaning the one that made the shorter path or shortest path to the goal available. 
We coded both verbal and pointing responses. If children didn't give a codable answer, responded none, mentioned the green COBO, or said both, even after being prompted to pick one option, a trial was excluded from analysis. We tested 64 kits, an additional 16 were excluded, and the sample size exclusion criteria and coding scheme were pre-registered. Sorry about that. So here you can see our results. Um, plotted are the proportion of correct responses in the four trials. And to analyze the data, we ran a Bayesian linear regression to model the proportion of correct responses. This way we could calculate a posterior distribution for the probability of responding correctly. Children performed better in block two, the who helped questions, than in block one, the how to help questions. Um, the credible interval of the parameter estimate for the difference between these two excludes the chance value of zero. In block one, where children were asked to help the COBO, the credible intervals of the parameter estimates include the chance value of 0.5, although for the one goal trial, the lower one in the corner, um, you'll see that the majority of the distribution is higher than this value. And in block two, where kids were asked to point out who helped, they performed above chance in both trials. The credible intervals exclude chance, although for the trial where kids choose between an agent who helped and one who performed an irrelevant action, this is just barely the case, so that's the upper one of these two. Um, factors we counterbalance, such as the order of trials in block one or the color of the items did not play a role. Okay, so I'll briefly sum up what we found. Um, when asked to help another agent, three-year-olds in our study did not consistently do so in a way that maximized the helpies' utility, though they were somewhat above chance in the one goal trial. When asked to identify who helped, they tended to select the agent who increased the helpies' utility, especially when the helping agent was contrasted with one who hindered. In the helping versus irrelevant action trial, they were just barely above chance. Why did we find such a pattern of results? Of course, there are some explanations that have to do with the specific ways we implemented our questions. For example, children may struggle more with a task where they themselves have to intervene rather than assess a third party situation. Or there might have been an order effect such that kids perform better in later trials because they learned or understood something over the course of the experiment. However, it could also be that our results reveal something about the way preschoolers think about helping actions. For instance, they may consider any action helping that potentially increases a helpies' utility without actually comparing degrees of helpfulness in such cases. Moreover, considering that kids responded most accurately in the trial where helping was contrasted with hindering, um, they may be most certain that an action which increases an agent's action cost is not helping. So to conclude, our hypothesis was that three-year-old preschoolers take helping to mean increasing another goal-directed agent's utility. Overall, we found um, mixed, uh, some but inconclusive um, evidence that preschoolers rely on a utility-based helping concept. And this, of course, leaves open many interesting questions. <laughs> For example, first and foremost, what do preschoolers mean by helping? Do they have the concept we hypothesized, maybe a more rudimentary version of it or something different altogether? And secondly, what is the developmental trajectory of this concept? What do infants, for example, represent when observing a third party helping situation? In what ways is that different, if at all, from a mature understanding? And what changes occur over the course of development? So you see much work still to do, but at least I hope I convinced you that these are interesting and non-trivial issues. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to your questions and comments. We will take questions, and I encourage you to use the microphone so that all of our colleagues here and online can hear your question. I see one in the back. Thank you very much for this interesting talk and uh, interesting experiments. So my question is, uh, what do you think? Do you think you will have more conclusive results if you look at the uh, looking behavior? Because these are three years, so maybe the explicit um, explicit um, method is uh, less conclusive with them. Um, yeah, it's possible. I mean would have to look into how to do that over Zoom. So I can tell you that before we piloted quite a bunch of different versions for this, and initially we wanted to do a version where we just wanted to see whether in a predictive question would um, kids understand that the helper is going to continue to help, so act according to what he was doing before, and the inconsistent, uh, the, the irrelevant agent was going to do whatever, so we kind of asked where will he go or something like this. 
And in this task, the kids were terrible, so it was completely, <laughs> completely random. Um, I don't know if, if maybe a looking or more implicit measure would um, bypass this. So yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> Hi, thank you. I, I'm interested in the, um, both response in the second study because yep. it's an accurate, in a sense, an yep. accurate response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about how often it occurred and yep. if kids sort of argued in some way or the other. I know they're young, but yeah, um, yeah, that's a that's a really good point. So um, we actually looked at this, and in the first trials, so the helping versus irrelevant, more than half of the kids first said both. And in the second one, um, I think it was four out of 64. So the helping versus hindering. And again, so because we had the order fixed, this might again be an order effect because our um, experimenter insisted that they pick one on the first one. So maybe for the second one, they're not gonna say both again because they know already they have to choose one. So that's one possibility. I like the option more that, <laughs> um, that they, they answer both for the first one. Um, either because they, uh, they, they don't understand helping the way that we think they do, or maybe they e go even beyond what we assume they were doing, and maybe they ascri ascribe some kind of intention to help to the relevant agent. Maybe they think something like, oh, you know, maybe he thought there's another apple there, so he was trying to also help, or, I mean, this is very speculative because we didn't ask them this, um, but that would be one possibility for why so many kids said both here. We have another question in the front. Yes, uh, so thanks for the talk. Uh, the, the question I have has to do with your definition of, of, of helping, uh, which is relative to the utility of an agent. Uh, you could also have another no notion where it is re relative to a task, mm -hmm. uh, diminishing the uh, cost of performing the task, uh, uh, whether or not the agent wants such a diminish diminution. So it happens to children and sometimes to adults that they're doing something that requires effort, and if you diminish the effort, they will say, don't help me, I don't want to be helped. Uh, so in that, the notion of helping they seem to be invoking in that case is task relative rather than uh, utility to the agent. Relative. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely a good point that there is something like paternalistic helping, I guess, so helping because you think you know better what someone else needs, if that's what you're getting at. And then I guess the question is also what, at what, in what way do you describe the utility? Is it related to what the agent herself wants in that moment or some kind of higher, uh, higher level? So if a mother puts mittens on her child who doesn't want the mittens, you know, it's not the child doesn't want that in the moment, but it's still in the interest of the child to not have cold hands outside. Yes, but it's, that's a, again, the, the issue is uh, uh, would the, uh, you put the mitten or a child doesn't want uh, the mitten, so then she doesn't feel that you're helping her. Uh, you're helping a child who is doing a puzzle and doesn't want to be helped. He thinks you're helping, but he doesn't want to be helped. So the notion of helping, used in that case, is not in terms, it's not paternalistic, it's just not help, it's helping, uh, uh, but, but it's an undesired helping. Mm -hmm. We'll have time for one more question. Yeah, that's a good point. I'll, I'll think about that more. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when, you, when you brought up the, um, naive utility calculus, I thought you, what you were going to test was between two interpretations. One is where the infant completes the goal of the other person, which is what most of the tasks do. He hands them the object he's reaching for, mm -hmm. he opens the door for him, versus one where you just make it easier, uh, like putting it closer or something, and, the other, and, and he still has to complete it. So do you have a... Um, so I would think that the, the young kids understand it in that sense that you have to sort of complete the goal for them, and the older kids would say anything that makes life easier for the agent um, could be considered helping. So do you have a condition where somebody makes it easier for the agent versus um, does something irrelevant? Uh -huh. I, I don't. It might be interesting to test to get ex at exactly this idea that maybe younger kids first have this kind of concept. I think um, we always think of this as kind of a graded um, notion where at the extreme end someone doing something for someone else or someone maybe helping in a way where the helpie um, by herself couldn't reach the goal by herself then you're decreasing the utility from basically zero to all the utility so it might be that that's actually easier for younger kids and that's an interesting question for follow-ups okay that's all the time we thank have you. so let's thank our first speaker